Here is a different type of inequality that is not as straightforward as what you're used to doing. It's called a rational inequality, and rational simply means that there's a fraction involved, like x over x minus 1. And so how do you find all the values for x that satisfy that inequality? In order to do that, you have to find the critical points. Actually, before you even do that, you want to make sure that the number on the right side of inequality is actually a zero, because if it's not a zero, you want to turn that into zero first. And later on, I will show an example, like here, where the number to the right is not a zero, on how to take care of that. But let's start with this example first. So, what are the critical points in this case? Well, the first critical point you find is the value for x that will make the denominator equal to zero, which is, of course, an undefined situation. You cannot ever divide by zero because you don't get a valid solution to that. So that means that x equal to 1, because 1 minus 1 is zero, will make the denominator zero. So this becomes a critical point. The next critical point is found by taking this inequality and turning it to its equivalent equation. In other words, changing the inequality sign to an equal sign. And again, the reason why we do that is to find the other critical point. So we get x divided by x minus 1 is equal to 0. And what value in the numerator for x will make that a true statement? What will x over x minus 1 equal 0? Well, the only answer is x must equal to 0, because if x is 0, 0 divided by minus 1 is still 0. So here's the other critical point. I just call them critical points because those are the points that delineate the regions of the solutions that we're looking for. So now we need a number line. Here's the number 0. How about the number 1, number 2, negative 1, negative 2. And let's find the critical points on the number line. So x equal 1 is a critical point. Now, can x equal 1 be part of the solution? And the answer is no. Why not? Well, because if x equals 1, I get a 0 in the denominator that makes that undefined. So x equal 1 cannot be a solution, but it is a critical point. It delineates the regions. So we draw an open circle indicating that 1 is not part of the solution. x equals 0. Is that part of the solution? Well, it's a critical point, and it's also not part of the solution because I don't have an equal sign there. If it said x is less than or equal to 0, then it would be part of the solution. But since the equal sign is not there, x equals 0 is also not part of the solution, so I have to draw an open circle there a, as well. All right, that means I now have three regions. Region number 1, region number 2, and region number 3. You can see region number 2 is not very big, it's just all the numbers between 0 and 1. Even though it's not very big, it still includes an infinite number of numbers. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, between 0 and 1 on the number line, you can put in an infinite number of numbers, even though it's not a very big region. So, don't diminish its importance, even though it's, since it's not very wide. All right. Now uh, we go ahead and try a test point out at each of the three regions to see if it satisfies inequality. So for region number one, let x equal any point to the left of zero, so negative one is good, and plug that into our inequality. So we have negative one divided by negative one minus one less than zero question mark. Again, you don't have to work this out. You can realize, simply realize that the numerator is a negative number. And the denominator, minus 1 times the minus 1, is a negative number. And so, if you divide a negative number by a negative number, you get a positive number. And a positive number can never be less than 0. So therefore, the answer is no. I picked a point in the region that does not satisfy this inequality. So, let's just cross it out. Now we need to pick a point in between 0 and 1. So 0.5 is probably a good one. So for region number 2, we're going to let x equal 0.5, and we'll plug that into our inequality. So we get 0.5 divided by 0.5 minus 1 less than 0, question mark. So if I plug in 0.5 for x, does that satisfy the inequality? Well, let's find out. Again, you don't have to actually work it out. You can simply say that the numerator must be a positive number. And the denominator is a negative number, because 0.5 minus 1 is less than 0. 
And if I divide a positive number by a negative number, I get a negative number. And a negative number is indeed less than zero, so the answer is yes. That means this region in here between zero and one is indeed part of the solution. Not, of course, including zero or one because they violate the conditions. One more region to check out, region number three. So for that, we pick a point to the right of one, like the number two, let x equals two, and we plug that into our inequality. So we get two divided by two minus one, and the question is, is that less than zero? Well, again, you don't have to work it out, although you could, it's pretty simple. You say two divided by two minus one is one. Two divided by one, is that less than zero? The answer is no. Or you could also say that the numerator is positive, and the denominator is a positive number. And when I divide a positive by a positive, I get a positive number, and a positive cannot be less than zero. So either way, you realize x equal to is in a region that does not belong to the solution, so you can get rid of that, which means that all the numbers between zero and one, not including the endpoints, will satisfy this inequality.